straight out of the starting gate, what happened? The horse bolted. And they're off. My entire ride was predicated by the start. I wanted to be in front. When the horse bolted and I have to correct his path, which wasn't quick enough because he got stepped on and then ran off, my entire ride was predicated by the start. At what point did you feel like this is not the same big brown I rode in the Derby in Preakness? And we fell into the turn and I and I tapped him once. He slowed down more and that's when I started race riding then. I mean, I was all out with him, spanking on him, kissing at him, screaming at him, encouraging him to go faster. And the more I encouraged him, the more he slowed down. What do you think that was? What, I, at that I, moment, I, what were you thinking? I, I didn't know because the, he was not sore. He was not traveling sore. Hear me roar, he was not sore. And Big Brown is plummeting as the field turns for home in the Belmont Stakes. I didn't know what the problem was. Every time I'd ask him to go faster, he'd go slower. And now we know from the images you've been showing on ESPN that he's got a spread shoe. It's probably nailing him, probably catching a nail in the foot every stride. But you said, hear me roar, he was not sore. He did not take any bad step. He did not feel sore. What I'm trying to figure out is if he didn't feel sore and if you didn't feel any sort of interference with the shoe whatsoever, could it have really had that much of an impact? Absolutely. How? Because he didn't proceed whatsoever. I mean, he'll take me for a gallop, but he won't push forward off of it. And Big Brown has been eased at the top of the stretch. Now, you took a lot of criticism after the race from within the sport and outside of the sport for mm -hmm. your ride. What was your reaction to that criticism? Well, I, they weren't in the saddle. When all of the skepticism was coming in about my ride, all I could do was sit here and tell them, you weren't in the saddle. So at any point since the race, have you felt like your status as Big Brown's jockey might be in jeopardy? It was never in jeopardy. You never, never crossed your mind? No, not even when I was pulling him up. No. But after the race, when you heard the criticism, did no. you think, oh boy? No. If he would have been beaten a couple of lengths, five even, I would, have, I would have thrown myself under the bus. I wouldn't have needed Dutro's help. But this horse didn't get past seven-eighths of a mile. At a, after seven-eighths of a mile, I had no more horse. The tank was empty. I'm more proud of myself sitting right here talking to you as I dwell upon what I did. I'll pat myself on the back. Way to go, Kent. There are some people speculating that the quarter crack and the missed training and the fact that he really didn't train hard between the Preakness and the Belmont may have been partially to blame. How do you feel about that? May have been partially to blame. I'm an athlete. I know I get two days off and I blow like crazy after my first ride on Wednesday. May is the word. It may have had something to do with it. You know, Rick Dutra was quoted as saying that he was embarrassed initially that day. He was embarrassed that his horse was eased. I was too. I was sad for Big Brown. I was sad for what the fanfare he might lose because he's the best horse I've ever ridden. And then no love lost for me there. And now I know why he didn't run. I can't wait for the Haskell. 